What's going on everybody? Jeff Holiday here and today I wanted to bring you a story that maybe you already saw on the news but just in case you have not I definitely wanted to cover it and also I feel like regardless of whether or not we've already read this story before we need to make sure that we learn the lessons that it can teach us. We're unfortunately going to be talking about uh, a young lady who passed away from COVID-19, but the circumstances surrounding how she got it and then how she unfortunately passed away are horrifying. So let's go. A high-risk Florida teen who died from COVID-19 attended a huge church party, then was given hydroxychloroquine by her parents, report says. At just 17, Carson Lee Davis had already experienced more challenges than most people face in their entire lives. From age two, she battled a host of health issues, including cancer and a rare autoimmune disorder. But not once did Carson let the serious ailments get her down, her family said. Now, interestingly enough, uh, in response to a lot of these articles, the only real pushback that I saw came from uh, a, a random random little uh, article written in a, uh, a hardcore right-wing newspaper that was basically saying, well, the, none of the articles mentioned that she was uh, battling cancer. Well, actually, yeah, they do. In fact, they very explicitly state that she was immunocompromised. So, so when the high school student from Fort Myers, Florida, died last month after contracting the novel coronavirus, her death, which marked Lee County's youngest virus-related fatality at the time, sent shockwaves through the community. Touching tributes to Carson, often pictured smiling broadly, poured forth and thousands of dollars were donated to GoFundMe campaigns. Even through the ravages of COVID, fighting to breathe, she never once shed a tear, complained, or expressed fear. Her mother, Carol Brunton Davis, wrote in a statement shared on one of the fundraising pages. But here's where things get really unfortunate. A medical examiner's report recently made public, however, has raised questions about Carson's case. The Miami-Dade County Medical Examiner found that the immunocompromised teen went to a large church party with roughly 100 other children where she did not wear a mask and social distancing was not enforced. Then, after getting sick, Nearly a week passed before she was taken to the hospital, and during that time, her parents gave her hydroxychloroquine, an anti-malarial drug, touted by President Trump, Trump that the Food and Drug Administration has issued warnings about, saying usage could cause potentially deadly heart rhythm problems. Now, that alone should be very troubling, okay? There's a obviously very sick young lady who has had quite a few problems with her immune system, uh, not the least of which is battling cancer, um, is in the middle of a pandemic going to a party at a church with a hundred other children where nobody's wearing masks and nobody's social distancing. Well, that's, that's, a, that's a problem. That's troubling. And then also, apparently, uh, her parents administered an unproven drug that is only really touted by the president and uh, his, his frantic followers as being effective. Well, that, that's a pretty troubling story already, but it gets worse. Carson's case, which gained renewed interest on Sunday after it was publicized by Florida data scientist Rebecca Jones, drew fierce backlash from critics, including a number of medical professionals, who condemned the actions taken by the teen's family in the weeks before her death. Florida has more than 206 thousand reported cases of coronavirus and 3,880 deaths as of early Tuesday. It's a lot more since the reporting of this. In a scathing write-up on her Florida COVID victim site, Jones described the church gathering as a COVID party. She alleged that Brunton Davis took Carson to the event to intentionally expose her immunocompromised daughter to this virus. Brunton Davis and the church reportedly behind the event could not be reached for comment late Monday night. Hmm... Now, as to whether or not this was actually a COVID party, I've been looking around a little bit, and it's speculative. However, it's important to understand exactly who her mother is. This is posted on her Facebook page. Carol Brunton Davis, an international chorus of doctors and health experts, urged people not to drink or inject disinfectant. Common vaccine ingredients, thimerosal, disinfectant. Formaldehyde, disinfectant. POTUS got media and doctors to admit vaccines are not safe. 5D chess. Genius. 
And not only that, but uh, apparently her mother's Facebook page is completely covered in QAnon conspiracy theories, anti-vaccine stuff, and more coronavirus misinformation. But I'm sure everybody's very shocked to find that out. On June 10th, Carson was one of dozens of young people who attended the church event mentioned in the report. While the report did not include specifics about the gathering, Jones shared images of a June 10th post from the First Youth Church's Facebook page advertising an event scheduled for that night called a release party. The church's page has since been taken down. Service is back and better than ever, the post said. There will be games, awesome giveaways, free food, a DJ, and music, and the start of our new sermon series. Fantastic. The medical examiner wrote that Carson's parents gave her az- az- azithromycin as a preventative measure from June 10th to 15th. The antibiotic in combination with hydroxychloroquine has been floated by Trump as a potential coronavirus treatment. According to the report, Brunton Davis is a nurse and a man identified as Carson's father is a physician assistant. But while she was taking the medicine, Carson began feeling ill, developing a headache, sinus pressure, and a mild cough. The report said. Then on June 19th, Brunton Davis noted that Carson looked gray as she slept, prompting the mother to hook her daughter up to oxygen normally used by Carson's grandfather, who has chronic obstructionary pulmonary disease, or COPD. So to recap, uh, this very sick young lady uh, gets taken to a church event. She contracts COVID-19. She starts giving unproven medical treatments Uh, touted by the president, uh, believed by her QAnon devotee mother, and uh, who's apparently a nurse, and then when she's not improving, she gets hooked up to her grandfather's oxygen machine. Okay, nothing about this sounds sketchy or inappropriate at all. At some point, Carson was also given a dose of hydroxychloroquine by her parents, an action that came less than a week after the FDA pulled its emergency use authorization for that drug and chloroquine, another anti-malarial medication. A letter dated June 15th stated that the drugs were unlikely to be effective for COVID-19 and that any potential benefits were outweighed by safety risks, including heart problems. It remains unclear whether Carson had a prescription for hydroxychloroquine. I'm going to guess probably, probably not, but that's just a guess. Not long after the oxygen and hydroxychloroquine were administered, Carson's parents took her to a local medical center. She was later transferred to the pediatric intensive care unit at a nearby children's hospital where she was confined, confirmed to have the coronavirus. Carson's parents declined to have her intubated and she instead started receiving plasma therapy. But by June 22nd, her condition wasn't improving and intubation was required. And despite all aggressive therapy and maneuvers, she didn't get better. And she passed away. Here's the problem. So we can look at the evidence that is presented in all of these different uh, news articles. We can look at the mentality of her mom and her belief into, say, QAnon and unproven medical treatments espoused by Trump, uh, you know, medical expert Trump, um, that could have possibly led towards her making these terrible decisions, which might have might have compounded factors that led to her daughter passing away. But here's the thing. It's too easy just to blame the mom, okay? It's just it's too easy to just blame her or or to blame uh, the the culture of maybe the church. Maybe the church was throwing a COVID party. I don't know. Uh, But it'd be too easy just to simply blame that. It's not just that. It's not. It's not just that. There's a whole culture. There's a whole culture of anti-scientism, of people who are so terrified of the pandemic, whether they're afraid of the pandemic or they're afraid of what they think is really happening behind the pandemic. It doesn't matter. It's all born out of fear. And you have paranoia pornographers in in news media, in social media, all over the world, trying to either justify their own stupid beliefs, trying to sell you something, uh, trying it for clout, or just simply doing it because they're obstinate against established scientific theory, medical practices, who knows? But who's guilty in this? A lot of people are guilty. Trump's guilty. By pushing this stupid shit. All the people in his goof troop pushing anti-science rhetoric. Tucker Carlson. Anybody who tries to just 
blindly throw away what what we understand are the rules and and the processes by which we're supposed to obtain knowledge and know how to address these things i understand it's very very confusing things move too slow we want an easy answer but that's not how the world works that's not how science works that's not how medicine works it's not i'm sorry and you can't just obstinate your way out of you know horrible things happening you know like i just i just don't believe it i just don't believe it how many times now have we seen a news article where somebody like was was you know throwing a tantrum about wearing a mask and later they die from coronavirus you know like <laughs> what is this uh look all i know is is this uh the america virus because that's what i'm calling it now uh is on the rise yet again in the united states usa number one we did it guys um and uh, this kind of incredibly naive, dangerous, and potentially lethal behavior needs to stop. So, for the love of God, if you start seeing some of your loved ones, your friends, and your family try like espousing this kind of dangerous bullshit, uh, speak up. Speak up. Do everything you can to try and convince them out of it. Because my God, we we. we we are, we are literally all in this together right now because we can't travel to damn near any other countries right now. We can't even get out. We're all in this together right now. We, we all got to deal with this. We all do, okay? I mean, ugh. Rest in peace, Carson. Um, for everybody else out there, please take care of your families. Uh, from mine to yours, we'll see you next time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.